Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. We have exclusive reporting on how Google may be stalking you, tracking your every move. Even if you think you understand how surveillance capitalism works, this will shock you. It shocked us. We've got an investigation coming up in just a minute. But first, we want to start with the biggest news development of the day. There is still no evidence the Trump campaign colluded with Vladimir Putin. Hundreds of journalists and criminal investigators, tens of millions of taxpayer dollars, more than a year of relentless searching that has basically shut the government down. In the end, nothing. But that doesn't mean we haven't learned a great deal about how our government actually works. We have. Just today, another trove of FBI text messages became public. Last night, the Senate released a criminal referral to the Justice Department against Christopher Steele. He's the shadowy author of the Trump dossier. So there's an awful lot going on. Here are some of the most significant developments in the last 24 hours. Now, you remember in the spring of 2016, President Obama was asked if the public could have confidence that his administration would never tamper with a criminal investigation. He responded unequivocally, quote, I guarantee that there is no political influence in any investigation conducted by the Justice Department or the FBI in any case, full stop, period. Well, that sounded definitive. And yet newly released FBI text suggest that may be false. Just five months after Obama made that claim, FBI attorney Lisa Page texted senior agent Peter Strzok, with whom she was having an affair, to say this, quote, POTUS wants to know everything we're doing. Now keep in mind at the time that Page wrote that, the Hillary Clinton investigation had been closed, but the investigation of Donald Trump had begun. The FBI clearly understood that President Obama was watching closely. That's the headline from today's batch of texts. There are many more texts on the way. Remember those five months of text messages that the FBI somehow lost? Well, they've somehow been found. The Department of Justice has them now. Congress is waiting to get them, so you can expect more revelations to come. Last night, as we said, the Senate Judiciary Committee released a redacted version of its criminal referral against dossier author Christopher Steele. It's a carefully written document, and it's packed with information. It got far less attention than the now famous Devin Nunes memo, but it may tell us much more. For example, the Senate memo released last night explains how Christopher Steele deliberately misled the FBI about the dossier he assembled. Steele told federal investigators he had not spoken to any media outlets about his research. In fact, he'd spoken to many of them, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, Yahoo News, the New Yorker, and CNN. That's not forgetfulness. If this memo is accurate, Steele lied to the FBI, and that's a federal crime. But maybe more important, thanks to Steele's deception, the FBI relied on a Yahoo News report to verify the dossier, when in fact the Yahoo story was itself simply citing the dossier. Circular. It would be pretty funny if it weren't so incompetent. Yet, and here's the striking thing, even after the FBI learned that Steele was lying to them, they continued to use his dossier to justify spying on Carter Page. As the Senate memo, memo makes clear, there are only two possible explanations for this. Either the FBI lied to the FISA court by saying Steele had not spoken to journalists before October of 2016, that's one, or two, Steele lied to the FBI and is therefore a discredited source. Neither one is good. Both are bad. And there's more. The Senate memo describes Steele as a sloppy and reckless researcher, an intense partisan with passionately left-wing views about American politics, who included unsolicited, unverified allegations in his assessments. Apparently, some of those allegations came from Hillary Clinton's own associates. It seems odd, since the Clinton campaign, of course, was helping to pay for the dossier in the first place, but there you go. As the memo puts it in a moment of dry understatement, all of this, quote, raises additional concerns about Steele's credibility. Yeah, that's for sure. In fact, it's hard to see how any fair person could disagree with that sentence. And yet, for some reason, the FBI seemed to have no concerns about Steele's credibility. His work, the dossier, appears to form the basis of this entire investigation. If there's more evidence out there that points to collusion during the 2016 campaign, we haven't seen it. We haven't even heard whispers of it. And in a moment like this, when leaks are the coin of the realm in Washington, where they're the primary way people communicate information, it's hard to imagine we haven't heard of any other evidence. So maybe there isn't any. Is the Steele dossier the entire thing, all they've got? The Steele dossier seems to be the reason we're having this conversation in the first place. That does not inspire confidence. 
Congressman Matt Gates is a Republican representing the state of Florida, Florida, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Good to be on, Tucker. So I want to ask you about a story that we had last night. The Daily Mail broke that uh, Congressman Schiff, Adam Schiff of Burbank, California, basically the lead mm -hmm. uh, of uh, on the Russia probe in the House among Democrats, was suckered in a prank phone call into believing that this Ukrainian group had naked pictures of a Russian model Trump was purportedly having an affair with. He then dispatched a researcher or an aide on the committee to call back the number and set up a document, Trump, document drop at the Ukrainian embassy. That seems like a significant story. It's not being covered today. Do you think that's a meaningful thing to know? Absolutely, Tucker. And Adam Schiff should step aside as the lead Democrat on the Intelligence Committee as a consequence of this scandal. While our FBI and Justice Department were suffering through an Obama nation, an Obama influence with these uh, attempts to influence investigations, you had Adam Schiff off playing footsies with the Ukrainians, trying to get naked pictures of Donald Trump. Adam Schiff has gone from someone with oversight responsibilities to an actual principal in this investigation engaging with the Ukrainians, and I think for better or objectivity, he ought to step aside. Well, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm tr really trying to be open-minded because maybe Trump collaborated with Putin. I mean, I, I, I'm waiting for the evidence, but the allegation appears to be this, that Trump's associates, including one of his children, spoke to a Russian lawyer in an effort to get damaging information on the other campaign, on a political rival, Hillary Clinton. Adam Schiff has basically admitted that he sought damaging campaign on a political rival from a foreign government. Why is that different? Well, well, and even more analogous would be Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions was talked into recusing himself because of a handshake in a greeting line. And here you've got Adam Schiff actually engaging with Ukrainians to try to dig up dirt on the president with seemingly no interest in whether or not the information is true or false or doctored. And so if you use the same standard that's been applied to Republicans to Adam Schiff, he should have no role on the Intelligence Committee as a lead on this issue. And I think that if, if you look at his credibility with the American people, it's eroded. I mean, it was only only a few weeks ago, Adam Schiff was saying if we released the Devin Nunes memo, there would be a national security catastrophe. That's been proven to be false. And so time and again, he's lost credibility. And I think the fact that he actively engaged with these Ukrainian principals, the fact that he goes on Russia Today, the Russian-sponsored television channel, to talk about our intelligence system certainly indicates that Adam Schiff should step aside. But that's a level of hypocrisy that would really embarrass most people. I mean, if you're calling for a president to leave office on the basis of charges, standards that mm -hmm. you yourself violate. Wouldn't you look yourself in the mirror and say, that's too hypocritical. I, I can't continue to do Well, and this. what does Nancy Pelosi think? I mean, while Nancy Pelosi was calling for Devin Nunes to be removed as the intelligence chairman, even though there was an ethics committee investigation that cleared Devin Nunes, that dispositively found that he did nothing wrong, here you've got Adam Schiff clearly engaging in shady tactics, and Nancy Pelosi spent her eight hours on the floor with a different rambling narrative. So, really quick, do you, th I mean, are we out on a limb suggesting that the dossier seems to be the core document that spurred this investigation? Is there other evidence that you I've know seen of? no other evidence. And the reason you know the dossier is the core piece of evidence is because they had to have Christopher Steele go plant news articles to validate the dossier. So the very author of the dossier has to go create and manufacture other facts to validate the dossier because it cannot validate itself. It has no mechanism to be proven true because it's all false. <laughs> it's like a freshman philosophy class. You're exactly right, though. Congressman, thank you. Thank you, Tucker.